distillation is a separation technique that separates different components of an unknown mixture based on their boiling point. And I think it's important to look at the factors that do influence boiling point. Remember that in order for something to boil, you have to provide enough energy, usually in the form of heat. You provide enough energy so that it breaks the intermolecular bonds that are keeping that component in the liquid phase. And so what you're really looking at when you're trying to assess the boiling points of different compounds and functional groups, and this is something we'll discuss a lot in a separate video, what you're really looking for is the different factors that would produce more intermolecular bonds in that compound. So a lot of times with organic compounds, you're looking at the length of the carbon chain because a larger carbon chain that isn't branched tends to have a lot of van der Waals interactions, so it's harder to break those intermolecular forces. Other things that you look for are polarity and hydrogen bonding. Polarity and hydrogen bonding are two other things that greatly enhance the intermolecular forces and thus require more energy to break those compounds apart and move them from the liquid phase into the gas phase. So when you're thinking boiling point, think about the length of the carbon chain, think about the polarity of the molecule or of its functional groups, and also think about the hydrogen bonding potential. Hydrogen bonding greatly enhances the boiling point and raises it much higher than comparable compounds that don't have hydrogen bonding. And then with distillation, it's a fairly simple setup. What you do is you have your unknown compound or mixture in a distillation flask and you heat it using a Bunsen burner or some heating plate or some object that gives it heat energy that then will transfer into here and eventually that energy will be enough to where you start to break the intermolecular forces that are keeping it in the liquid phase and the components will rise up as they turn into vapor. They'll rise up here and then they'll move into what's called a condenser. And the condenser usually has some sort of cooling water to make it colder and thus promote the gas phase turning back into the liquid phase and moving down here. As it moves down here, it will eventually move into a collection flask or receiving flask. And that is where you collect the things that have already boiled and now are re-entering the liquid phase because they have been condensed. And the collection flask or receiving flask contains the distillate or distillate, which is essentially the thing that has been distilled and then now has re-entered the liquid phase. And so the major things to realize are that the ones with the lowest boiling points will be the first ones to enter the gas phase. And as they enter the gas phase, then they'll reach up here, they'll be recondensed, and they'll travel down into your collection flask or receiving flask as the distillate. And then you can have various degrees of this. First, you'll have something with a very low boiling point, then maybe the next lowest boiling point, and you will have various phases of distillation depending on how many components you have in your unknown mixture. And essentially that's how distillation works. You might have a thermometer to kind of keep track of the temperature at which these things occur because that thermometer can then give you clues as to the boiling point of your unknown compounds or perhaps it might just be one unknown that you're looking at the boiling point of but the thermometer can be helpful. Sometimes you'll have a cooling water that is going in and out which aids in the condensation process. Sometimes you'll have a vacuum attached to this to lower the pressure within the collection flask or collection area that is part of the condenser because the vacuum can lower the atmospheric pressure and remember that boiling occurs when the vapor pressure above your liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure surrounding it. And so by using a vacuum, you can lower the atmospheric pressure in this environment and thus it becomes easier to distill things because your compound will boil at a lower temperature. But essentially the way distillation works is you need to find a way to heat your unknown you need to have that rise and then recondense. 
you need to collect it for some, in some way, and you need to have some thermometer or something that helps you recognize the temperature at which these unknown compounds boil. One variation of distillation that you'll encounter is called fractional distillation. It's just a variant where you use packed beads or perhaps some copper mesh surrounding this area. And that has the effect of increasing the accuracy of your distillation. Remember that every once in a while something with a higher boiling point might boil at a lower temperature just because of the randomness of how heat is distributed and how heat reaches the compounds. And so sometimes things that aren't supposed to be boiling yet will boil and enter the gas phase. If you're doing a fractional distillation, you either have beads or some sort of copper or metal here that helps those recondense and it basically increases the accuracy by adding a second safeguard. The second safeguard is that unless it is really ready to boil, it will recondense. And so this helps you do a more accurate distillation and that's called fractional distillation. The exact nuances of it are unlikely to be tested on the MCAT, but you should be aware that fractional distillation exists because fractional distillation is a way of increasing the accuracy of your distillation procedure. Other ways that you can do this is you can heat it more slowly so there's less likelihood of random particles entering the gas phase before they've actually reached the temperature that is their normal boiling point. Or you can find other safeguards within the condenser that can make it more difficult for something to be distilled unless it's absolutely ready to do so. But the essence of distillation is that you're separating based on boiling point, remembering that boiling point is based on the length of the carbon chain, the polarity of the functional groups, and the hydrogen bonding within your compound. You have some unknown that is being separated or just identified if it's only one thing within the unknown. And then it will rise into the gas phase, come down and recondense, and then be collected in a receiving or collection flask as the distillate, which is something that has now been distilled. And that's the major parts of this analytical technique known as distillation. It's separation based on boiling point with various safeguards set up and an apparatus arranged so that you can find the most effective ways in order to clarify what is being boiled and exactly the point at which that is happening.